Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Sanaul Lajan. I'm lecturer here at Edinburgh Napier University in the UK. Uh, today I'm here to talk about sensor fault diagnostic algorithms using machine learning. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about some different uh, sensors applications, some different areas where the sensors can be deployed or they are already being deployed. I'm also going to talk about uh, the sensor faults and some of the consequences uh, that can occur if those faults are not dealt with in time. Um, moreover, I will uh, highlight some of the famous uh, sensor fault types. Finally, uh, my presentation will include some of the developments toward sensor fault diagnostic using a machine learning algorithms. Talking about the sensor applications, uh, basically there are many uh, applications where the sensors are usually deployed uh, at dispersed uh, locations in a dispersed environment uh, and uh, the main objective is to monitor and record the environmental conditions okay once these sensors they record or they acquire the uh, reading from the environment then the sense data is collected and organized uh, usually at a base station uh, through some cluster heads and it is possible or it is common that these base stations are located at a very uh, distant position. Talking about uh, some of the sensor applications, we can see uh, a lot of examples in real life, but in this figure, uh, uh, there is an example about a wireless sensor network which is composed of different sensors, including uh, sound sensor, heat sensor, vibration sensors, and uh, those sensors may be connected with the sync through some uh, multi-hop networks, and uh, the sync is actually connected to a user, or we could call it a server through internet. And the objective here is to collect the environmental conditions uh, or sense the environment uh, around a target node uh, in this case, it is represented by using some uh, red colored boxes. Some other applications may include smart health, smart grid, smart mobility, smart home, Internet of Things, uh, small retail, open data, and uh, there are a lot um, more as well. You may also have seen some of the check signs on your car dashboard. Uh, asking you to check engines, airbags, brakes, batteries, whatever. So there is a possibility that these check signs arise uh, due to some malfunctioning uh, sensors or some faults in the sensors, which is actually the false alarm. And uh, if the if there was a way to detect either the sensor is working fine or not, it would be easier to diagnose the problem. Another example can be considered of uh, a network or industrial IoT network, which is equipped with uh, a lot of uh, temperature monitoring sensors remotely, uh, especially in areas where it is not uh, easy to access. And uh, it might be, for example, uh, for a target device, like in this case, it is about uh, the uh, furnace. So the, the idea here is to uh, sense the temperature of the furnace and try to control the temperature just to avoid any unwanted circumstances, right? And uh, just in this case, it, the, the yellow colored line represents the fiber optic sensor cable, which is used to collect the data from all the sensors and transfer to uh, the user or the administrator. Another example of a sensor network would be a, a fire detection system using IoT, specially designed to detect any potential fire in outskirts in the remote areas. For example, 
uh, uh, inside of the forests, right? So the uh, how it goes is the sensors are installed far inside the forest, which continuously try to sense the environment and collect the data and then transport the data through some uh, wireless communication links to a gateway uh and which is then transferred to uh, a device a, maybe a smartphone tablet or a pc uh, which a user can uh, access and try to analyze okay so in this case as well it's not usually very easy to access those areas uh, just to recharge the sensors uh, or to replace them if there is any fault or uh in case of false alarms it may be very expensive to go there and uh, do some operation while in reality there there is no fire well whatever the application may be whatever you're using uh, sensors for but if there are too many false alarms or uh, th there may be some costs associated with it for example, the, uh, the cost to the human lives may be associated because of the risk of complacency due to repetitive false alarms. Uh, also, there may be some delayed response to real alarms as well if there are too many uh, false alarms uh, on, on a regular basis. Moreover, these false alarms can also uh, be a reason we, uh, to divert fire and rescue teams from from real emergencies uh, similarly the cost to businesses may be in terms of disruption to production inconvenience to customers and uh, fire service charge or for attending the the fires in case of uh, false alarms uh, it may also affect your reputation or your organization reputations by making you uh, unable to fulfill normal level of service due to uh, these extra interruptions and can make uh, you look complicated about life safety. Uh, also, there may be loss of confidence from customers or staff, fire service or uh, uh, even the workers as well. Uh, and uh, naturally, they, there would be a cost to fire and rescue services because they, they would be uh, wasting time and also their limited resources, which could be used otherwise uh, in uh, a needy environment. So these are all the different costs associated with the false alarm that may arise due to some faults in the sensors. Uh, talking about the sensor faults and some consequences, there, there may be some uh, different uh, types of faults or underlying reasons of why the sensor may become faulty. For example, there may be some hardware failures uh, or there may be uh, some connection failures, some soldering problems. Uh, uh, there is a possibility that this failure or these uh, wrong readings are due to calibration failure in, in in the sensors. There may be a problem of the battery as well. Uh, so whatever the, the underlying reason is, th there may be a different pattern in the data coming in, in from the sensor according to the uh, fault type. And broadly, they may have uh, different consequences in terms of economic impact, for example, if there are uh, false alarms, then uh, the, the fire safety services may have to visit unnecessarily uh, and there may be uh, the economic impact. Uh, there may be safety issues in, for industrial workers or uh, forest animals if there are wrong readings uh, sent or false alarms. Um, similarly, the, there is uh, the uh, reliability of the system may be questionable if there are too many false alarms due to sensor faults. Uh, and it may result in function delays or taking some wrong actions. So whatever the reason may be, the, the, there are broadly uh, consequences in terms of economic safety and system reliability. Now let's talk about some of the sensor fault types in the literature. Uh, so there is hardware or bias fault in which case some bias is added to, to the output of the sensor. Uh, if the spike fault occurs, then 
the spikes some with some specific amplitude are observed in in the output of a sensor uh, and that's those spikes may be in periodic uh, time intervals or non periodic as well in case of the data loss we would lose some of the uh, data points uh, for a short period coming in from from the sensors uh, in case of the drift fault uh, there is a continuously increasing uh, slope or we can call it continuously increasing bias in the output of of the sensor uh, the erratic or precision degradation fault makes the output of uh, the, the sensor having a large uh, variance as compared to the output of the uh, normal sensor in case of a stuck fault the output of the sensor uh, gets stuck at a specific value when there, there is no change in in the uh, output uh, similarly in the random fault uh, the output of the sensor um, just follows a random pattern and does not follow a pattern of a uh, uh, normal uh, uh, data output uh, normal sensor output sorry yeah so in these figures you can see all uh, the blue lines representing the output of a normal sensor and the dashed red line uh, representing the output of a faulty sensor for each fault case now before talking about some of the machine learning based sensor fault diagnostic algorithms uh, let's broadly look into machine learning there are three major uh, techniques of machine learning in the supervised case uh, the machine learning algorithm is trained using some a big amount of the historical data right so the uh, in the training phase the machine uh, the ai algorithm tries to learn the knowledge from the historical data and then based on that knowledge it makes a decision in in real time uh, applications okay uh, so the most common application areas uh, would be the classification or regression for uh, supervised machine learning uh, unlike supervised learning in the in case of unsupervised learning there is no historical data to train so basically a machine learning unsupervised learning based algorithm is developed and that is exposed to real time uh, applications or environment where the, the machine learning algorithm tries to make a decision and train itself at the at the same time the common ex, uh, application uh, example applications include clustering and dimensionality detection the reinforcement learning is the technique where the machine learning algorithm is trained with a limited amount of historical data and then exposed to real time applications where they are asked to make some actions and against each action they are uh, rewarded so there can be positive reward negative reward depending on the action uh, and the environment so uh, the, in this way the the reinforcement based machine learning algorithm tries to train itself and learn more about all uh, these uh, environment and actions so coming back to the main goal uh, for the sensor fault diagnostic algorithm uh, we aim to scrutinize the behavior of uh, the sensor through the sensors data that is coming out of the sensor and what we want to do here is to develop a lightweight uh, system lightweight uh, detection and diagnosis system using machine learning because those uh, sensors are usually equipped with limited uh, resources in terms of the computational resources and also the uh, battery capacity so uh, the challenges here are uh, the the types of the sensor faults like we already discussed a few but there may be much more sensor fault types that we are not aware of yet there is also a problem of diversity in the deployment where the different types of sensor may be installed it, uh, for different applications or in different areas and in some cases the sensors may be providing uh, data in different formats uh, and 
there is also a challenge of the limited uh, resources in, in the sensor nodes, uh, as I mentioned already. So uh, how a generic sensor fault diagnostic model using machine learning looks like, uh, in this example, uh, or in this figure, you can see we have taken a temperature sensor and a humidity sensor. Okay, so the output from these two sensors is taken uh, and collected uh, through multi hop routing if the sensors are installed at, at um, four uh, locations and it can be using a single hop if the sensors are located nearer. By the way, we obtained uh, normal data samples from the sensors because uh, we couldn't find any faulty sensor. They, uh, I mean, the data that we need at this stage is actually the data where the sensor becomes faulty from the, the normal. So we want the data about the transition, which is not easy to get more. So we uh, obtained this normal data uh, uh, from the uh, healthy sensors, and we tried to simulate the different faults, including hardware, drift, spike, erratic, data loss, random, and stuck uh, into that normal data. Uh, uh, at the end, we just labeled this data to obtain a labeled historical data, which was then used to train uh, machine learning algorithms. Okay, so in this scale, uh, in this figure, we have uh, considered extremely randomized trees, SVM, random forest, uh, MLP, and decision tree. Okay, so once the, these algorithms are trained, then they are being tested uh, using some testing data. Um, to see how it performs on unseen data. In this figure here, we are going to look at how an extremely randomized trees work, which is actually the, the main focus of this work. Uh, so in, in extremely randomized trees, different uh, number of the uh, uh, different trees are being trained. Uh, by using uh, the same data set but having a different set of features so for example there can be tree number one which is being trained using n1 set of features tree number two is you uh, trained using n2 set of features and so on uh, by the end usually we uh, the the testing sample is input to each one of these trees where they make a decision about which class this uh, input sample belong to uh, all the outputs are then uh, um, collected and a majority voting system is used to decide about the final output. You can see the steps toward the extra trees algorithm on, on the right hand side here. Again, there are some challenges in terms of uh, the, the intensity of the sensor fault, which is usually very low and it's not easy to detect them. There is also the context awareness problem where some changes might occur in the in the output of the sensor data due to the uh, changes in the context or the environment. And also, uh, again, there is a resource limitation problem which needs to be tackled. So now to tackle these problems, we have worked further uh, in the next slides. The, to tackle the problem of the context awareness, we developed a more distributed uh, nature of the fault diagnostic system where the machine learning algorithm first has, has to decide about the context, either the, the, the sensor or change is because of the context or is it because of the, um, the, the fault. And once it, it has come to a decision about it, then further it can decide about or try to detect the sensor fault type which has occurred. For example, uh, you can see here uh, that the system is composed of two phases. The phase one is about uh, training. So in this case, two different algorithms are being trained, one for the context awareness decision and one for the uh, fault based uh, decision. So in once the uh, sensor output uh, comes in, first it has to pass through the context awareness uh, model where it has to decide about the, uh, the difference being because of the context awareness or is it being because of the fault. Once a decision has been made here, then the output will go through the, another model, multi-class classification model, which will decide about the fault 
type which has been occurred. However, uh, still we are facing the challenges of uh, data scarcity, the, uh, uh, the data being very unrealistic uh, because in this case we have obtained data from a healthy sensor and just simulated the fault types and also the adversarial nature of faults where it is not easy to detect the the minor uh, changes occur due to sensor fault especially if the fault is in the it in its early stages so still we have uh, the same uh, these challenges that needs to be tackled uh, having these challenges in mind we try to develop a more uh, robust and uh, more uh, sensitive fault detection and diagnosis algorithm using GANs uh, following the digital twin model, which is inspired from the digital twin concept, right? So basically what a GAN does is it has two different networks, a generator network and a discriminator network. Uh, the discriminator network is given input of uh, a specific class, a target class. In our case, it's the healthy the, the data samples from a healthy sensor and the generator network tries to generate fake samples very near to the uh, to the non faulty or to the target class uh, and the difference is so low or uh, it is uh, designed to have uh, uh, the discriminator network train against the small differences that can occur from uh, uh, in the in the input samples against the non faulty or the target classes so in this way it tries to train itself uh, in a more robust way where it it can be so sensitive to detect even smaller changes that that can occur so once it's trained then the train discriminator network is used in a real time environment for example in this case to decide a uh, decide uh, either the uh, input sample is faulty or not faulty in our case we have used a cnn uh, so uh, which is basically a model to work on the two dimensional data uh, so in our case we have transformed our uh, healthy sensor or the uh, in sensor data into two dimensional uh, arrays uh, these are some of the images showing uh, the those uh, uh, arrays. You can see a clear difference between the images of a healthy signal and also the images from drift fault signals as well. So in our work, in our paper, we have also included the images from, from additional uh, faults as well. and these are the gain generated samples by generator network uh, these are actually the fake samples and you can see how closely they are uh, to the healthy uh, samples so by using this uh, set of samples and also the actual healthy samples the uh, gain network can uh, train itself uh, in a more robust way where it can make much more sensitive decisions with higher uh, accuracy and precision the results are are given here you can see there is a clear cut boundary between the discriminated uh, discriminator output for no fault samples and the discriminator output for uh, drift fault samples so in this way we can try to make our uh, uh, fault diagnosis sample to detect the uh, um, the faults which with much more uh, sensitivity uh, this table here represents the uh, results we have achieved using gain based model and we can see that it it was uh, easy to achieve a 98% accuracy using gains some future directions for this project may be developing some robust for diagnostic model more robust uh, than the ones that that have been developed so far uh, it's also uh, important to analyze the scalability and adaptability of of these models the imbalanced data is also a, a, a big problem here and uh, acquiring some realistic data from uh, real healthy and uh, faulty uh, sensors is also important 
thank you so much for uh, hearing me out if you have any question please do send me an email thank you